Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying this, uh, I'm not really sure what you would call this. Uh, let me tell you the backstory behind it though. So what I'm using this for is a bass and panfish fly. Um, originally I came up with this concept as a request from a customer. They were looking for a squirmy wormy but something with a little bit more durability so what I thought I would try is taking some of this uh, spandex material this is uh, actually bug legs from Flat Tires Dungeon but uh, any of the uh, super floss that sort of thing will work just as well so I thought this will give it a lot more durability uh, but what ended up happening is uh, the customer didn't exactly like the way it performed for the trout fishing that he was doing. So I decided I'd tie a couple up in chartreuse and uh, I did this one with a black body in chartreuse and uh, tried it out at the local lake where I do quite a bit of my fishing and it turned out it worked rather well. And uh, the durability of this material came in really handy. So one of these flies I can catch upwards of a couple hundred fish, no issue with it. All right, let's get a fresh hook into the vise. So you're gonna need a jig hook here. I've got a Kona uh, BJH here. You can use uh, whatever your favorite uh, jig hook is. And for bead, I'm just gonna use a black nickel brass bead on here. Of course you can tie that with tungsten if you want a bit heavier fly. Just secure that in the jaws. And I've just got a regular countersunk bead. Um, you could probably use a slotted bead if you want, but I actually kind of prefer this one as I can just push the material up against this bead and it kind of slopes out nicely. All right, so as I said, we're gonna be using some of this Fly Tires Dungeon bug legs and these are just the regular size. They're not uh, any of their uh, smaller sizes. I think this is the 100% size and you get quite a bit of material in here. I can't remember how much I paid for it, but I'm pretty sure it was less than two bucks for that whole thing. Um, for thread, I'm going to be using a black 6 aught for that. So let's just go ahead. We'll get started just right in behind the bead. Put a jam knot in there. And we'll just kind of put a base layer of thread down along the hook shank. And we'll just take it just to where the hook starts to bend. We'll snip that off there. All right, we're gonna take four strands of the bug legs. Now, they're a decent length, and uh, for the size 10, basically what I started doing is uh, just folding this in two quarters and then cutting it. So I'll have about 16 legs off the front and the back, okay? So easiest way is just to kind of match up the tips and then cut it down the middle and then do that again. And don't worry if they're not uh, perfectly lined up. All right, so we just want to kind of divide that more or less evenly uh, between the front and the back. If you need to put a little bit more length, put the tiny bit more length on the front because what happens is when you fish this, these are all gonna push back as it jigs through the water. That looks not too bad, so I'm gonna pull my thread up to the front. And just put a loose, a couple loose wraps up there. 
and we'll just make sure that we have all that all those strands oriented more or less on top of the hook shank and once you got them where you like them you pull down on there one nice thing about this material it's a lot more durable than the silicone used in the squirmy wormies is why which is why I used it uh, in the first place so you can put a lot more pressure down on this as you're wrapping the body uh, it also doesn't react the same way to some of the glues with the silicone you have to be careful if you're using uh, certain types of uh, glues like anything that's uh, acetone based it will just melt through that silicone uh, but for this one you can use uh, some Sally Hansen on there so we've got all that bug leg secured i'm just gonna put a nice generous drop of head cement on there you can use uh water-based or super glue whatever you like so to dress the middle of this i'm going to use some ice dub in peacock black see there's the product number it's one of my favorite colors actually of the uh, hairline ice dub and they do have a decent range of different uh, peacock and black colors uh, but this is one of my favorites so you don't need a ton but uh, you do need a decent amount and we just basically want to fill in here so I'll just zoom out a little bit here so you can see the dubbing so all I do is just pinch a little bit of the dubbing and then twist it and then I'll push it down as I twist more on and then that gives me my noodle all right So now we're ready to wrap in and uh, just try and start at the back here. We don't necessarily have to taper this or anything like that. I just like to put the glue or the head cement down underneath that just because uh, like I said earlier this fly gets quite a bit of action and uh, I've had well over 200 fish days on a single fly without any problems I mean at the end of the day this is getting a little ratty uh, the body there's not too much uh, the ice dub left in there and the beads kind of sliding back and forth but it still holds up pretty well so we'll just add a whip finish to the fly here just have to be careful with those legs you don't want to catch them in and I'm just gonna add a second whip finish here just to make sure that that fly is gonna stay together well there you go that is the buckhorn bully Hope you enjoy that hope you get a chance to try it out if you have any questions make sure to post them down below and i'll answer them as best as i can if you want to just say hey happy new year i'm all for that too thanks for watching keep hooking your vice